Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve. In the last episode, we finally made our way to the exhibition grounds, and now we're here. We examined some of the, uh, of the, of downstairs, and we found a crossbow and a piece of green cloth. And we also received the experiment sketch from Gina, with which we talked to. And it was very nice to see her again. Uh, she really changed, but you know that already if you've watched the last episode, so without further ado We are here at the actual scene of the accident or the murder We'll have to find out so let's start exam examining away hmm, This looks like Moscow There are so all sorts of strange buildings here in the great exhibition grounds aren't there? I Seem to remember something similar being exhibited in Japan one time. Oh, in your country, Runa? I do wish I could go and see it. I present a particular steel samurai with a present of one of Hurley's stories I'd written specially. And see if I couldn't get Hurley into jam against some Bartitsu master dangers. Um, you might not find as many of those sorts of people around as you think. Oh, well, that's dull. Oh, but I do know a prosecutor with a con mage top knot I could introduce you to. A con mage? Really, do you think I could have my picture taken with him, do you? Assuming he's recovered from the trim Kazuma gave him a year ago, yes. They're, they're talking about Aochi-san. <laughs> Aochi-san. Okay, let's have a look at this. It, uh, it ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently and mercilessly. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beam through the air. Just a second. Hmm. Uh, my phone just sprang out of its. Just a second. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, sorry. Just my phone is making funny noises. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beam through the air. Yes, beamed. Not blasted. That's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible, though, Iris? Oh, Runo, I'm just a child. How should I know? A child when it suits you, you mean? From what I can tell, I think you were to pull this lever here. Stop! Don't touch that! Oh, that one practically instantaneous kiss is the way you flew just now, Gregsy. Please, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you can have some of my latest special plan to make up for it. Gluck, 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 gluck. Ah, wonderful. This stuff really is wonderful. It's just like old times, this is. All of a sudden he will talk to us. We are presenting Professor Hairbrain in court tomorrow, Inspector. So we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha! Listen, Sunshine. Even I'm not allowed to touch anything up here. It's that lost and special dispensation of scientific equipment act to blame. It's driving me potty! Oh yes, that special dispensation. The professor mentioned that too. More red tape's all we need. I don't know what the government thinks it's playing at sometimes. But we're allowed to just look, aren't we? Uh... Surely that's all right, isn't it, Grexy? Of course, ladyship. Anything you say, your ladyship. But please don't get your dainty hands dirty, will you? Don't worry, we wouldn't dream of touching anything, would we, Runo? She really knows how to get what she wants. So all of a sudden we can converse, but I still want to check things out here. Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I'd say. We should have a good look around the machine while we can, I think. Touch anything, I'll make sure I'll kill you before I get strung up myself, you hear? I, I won't touch a thing, I promise, so please spare a thought for your digestion. 
Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually assemble people like the Professor claims? Hey, he asks looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this blade and scrap metal, maybe we could answer that question. But we can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules you made. Exactly, the annoying, obstructing, flaming rules. Oh, uh, look at... Oh, look at the base of the machine there. Oh yes, there's a tool of some kind poking through the wire mesh. It's a screwdriver, I think. Oh, isn't it lovely one? The handle is in the shape of a capital letter A. It is? Oh yes, you're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything, I said. Touch anything, I'll make sure I kill you before you get strung up myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, y yes, yes, I understand. Sorry, I only touched a tiny weeny bit. But, Gregsy, I'm very curious about the screwdriver. Really, very, very curious. Of course, ladyship. You're so clever, your ladyship fancies, but it's something like this. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Runa found it first! I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off with it. Oh no, we couldn't even talk to him. I messed up again. Hmm, that was very mean, I'm afraid. Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy and embarrassing mistake in next month's installment now. Poor Gregson. Oh, that is unfair. Usually that ha doesn't happen. Oh, that is unfortunate. W what is this gigantic thing over there? It looks like an enormous water wheel. Oh, that's a Ferris wheel. There'll be people riding inside of those little cabins you can see. Why? Well, they rotate nice and slowly, so it's a wonderful way to see the surrounding scenery. Wait, it's turning? But it looks completely still. Yes, that's because it's turning so slowly. One complete revolution takes about half an hour. If you were made enough to go in one, it would be more fun to whiz around fast, don't you think? I feel as though you might have just invented a new sort of ride there, Runo. Ah, uh, I'm so annoyed by this now. Absolutely uncalled for. So there's nothing else here to look at? Oh, that is just... Why? Uh, at least we can have a look at this. An amazing horn-shaped device is pointing towards the crystal tower. I, I suppose once people are disassembled by the machine, they're shot out of the thing or to wherever they're going. I don't think it was supposed to shoot anything. I don't think it was supposed to shoot anything, Runo. It was set up to beam people to the Crystal Tower, where they'd be reconstructed in their original form. Well, I don't like the look of it. If it wasn't as amazing as it looks, the accident wouldn't have happened in the first place, of course. I suppose that's true, yes. But nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? Uh, nothing ever goes to according... I'm really dazzled now. Okay, let's have a look at the, the other balloons. So those are the people carrying balloons dangling silently in the skies over London. I always thought the day would come when humans would discover how to fly. But I never imagined it would involve them being suspended from the colorful floating Timari uh, handballs. Timari handballs. I must sure. I'm sure it must feel amazing being up there among the clouds. Let's take a ride together, Runo, please! If I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to try it. But without a cast iron guarantee that the thing won't plummet to the ground, I'm too scared. Oh well, in that case, I should tell you what Hurley said. It's physically impossible for a flying balloon to plummet to the ground as long as it doesn't explode. Yes, call me crazy, but I think that exploding part might play on my mind a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> just a little. Okay, so we checked out everything here. Oh, I'm really annoyed that we couldn't talk to Gregson now. So how are we supposed to go down then? Whoops, that's not what we wanted to do. That just does this. So how are we supposed to go down even? 
So we're just stuck up here. So we have to move from here, apparently. Oh, no, there he is. Oh, oh okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought he was gone. They said he was gone. Oh, I broke the game, guys. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the gun policy. Using high voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body and then beam him across the crystal tower. It's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. True, it was by far the most unusual of the experiments planned for the exhibition of mine. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carrying out something so dangerous with so many spectators present, I mean. The government's doing everything it can to promote new science and technology at the moment. They're more worried about being ahead of the game than the odd spot of public safety infringements. If they can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see. Yes, I suppose that's true, in a way. So the powers that be, uh, that be are placing a heavy emphasis... What? So the powers that we are placing... This must be, right? Whatever. A heavy emphasis on scientists' right at the moment. So the powers that we are placing... Said... So the powers that be are... Placing a heavy emphasis on scientists' rights at the moment. So the powers that be... Okay, now I finally get it. So the powers that be are placing a heavy emphasis on scientists' rights at the moment. Sorry. What sort of rights? They're making it so that any theories that the brains have remained their legal property, as it were. Right through developing into it into a practical idea and even going into production. Which is the infuriating reason as coppers aren't allowed to touch this crime scene. Because the new high highfalutin high special dispensation for scientific equipment act forbids it. Ah, oh, I see now. The only people with permission to investigate here are from some brand new department at the yard. The forensic investigation team it's called. We've been relegated to keeping guard. The forensic investigation team. Any old fool can see that this heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. But just because it says scientific equipment on the paperwork, we can't do a flaming thing with it. Poor Grexy. He's very head up, isn't he? Special dispensation. Can we present stuff to him? Yes, we can. Oh, we're gonna converse first. Special dispensation. Remind me again. What's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Oh, you having me at it, Sunshine? It's the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Hmm, yes, I think Curly mentioned that recently, with a real twinkle in his eyes as I remember. <coughs> I'm sure he did, your ladyship, I'm sure he did. Passed especially for this great exhibition it was. All scientists have to do is present their ideas and mentions to some suits in the civil service. And if it gets rubber stamped, that's a guarantee of rights to maintain the invention's confidentiality. What does that really mean? Think about it. Think of all the world changing new inventions on display every day at this exhibition. Although a good half of them are a load of cobblers, if you ask me, performed by shammers like yourself. Thanks for that. Oh, I love how absurd some of the inventions here are. It's also funny. It might be fun to you, but a member of the force has to be present at every single demonstration. Can you imagine, huh? Hang signs, that's what I say! Oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You'd still think otherwise after spending a day guarding all these shaman's bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how can anyone hope to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well... There is a point, sadly. Sorry? Thanks to another of our government's bright ideas. If any theory or invention is deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. The scientists get funding? Exactly, and that's what they're all after. All these chambers coming from far and wide to clog up Hyde Park. And who has to keep them all safe, huh? Who has to smile politely and welcome them? Us coppers, that's who. So you can see why I say it now, can't you? Hang signs! Hang it! Oh, maybe I can see your point. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk about Professor Hairbrain then. 
Apparently, Professor Harbrain lives and works in Germany now, conducting his research. That's right. Came back to Britain especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, we learned something else about the professor earlier today. About his time in further education, it turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lord von Ziegs. Ah, oh, what's that? That's news to me! But, but if von Ziegs mans the prosecution, then as the accused, the professor's fate is... Sealed? Because the Reaper will get him one way or another? Blimey, that man's beyond me. I don't know what goes on in, on in that head of his. Talking of Van Zeeks, this morning's paper ran the story of him being attacked. Read that? Oh yes, but Mr. Reaper's completely fine. Nothing to worry about. Yes, right. Glad to hear it. Still, the Reaper, huh? How long is that business gonna keep up, I wonder? The Mystery of the Reaper The victim of this case, the investor Mr. Asman, who was another of the Reaper's victims, or so I heard. Lord Barrack von Ziegs is a top-class prosecutor, but even he can't always push the right wording through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about your jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified. And that's how the notion of the Reaper of the Bailey came about, isn't it? Obviously, Scotland Yard suspected Van Zeeks initially. We all assumed he was taking matters into his own hands if he failed to seal the deal in court. Although the man himself denies that charge. Well, we've done a very thorough investigation, and the conclusion we reached... ...is that Lord Van Zeeks is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the courtroom. There's no question in my mind. I'd stake my reputation on it, I would. But if that's true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't just have coincidentally died if nobody killed them. I know that, but I can't explain it. It's a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. Professor Herbray mentioned something else. He said that at university, Lord von Zeeks was a totally different person, easygoing and kind. You what? He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. Do you have any idea what it was? No clue. Really? Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrating crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourself elsewhere, huh? Huh, interesting, Mr. Gregson. Why won't you talk to us? Why won't you? This is the symbol of the defense lawyer where I come from, Inspector. Well, it doesn't pass master here in London. You might as well chuck it in the deep fat fryer. No one's ever said that to me before. Mr. Sean suggested I fed it to a dog, though. If you fry it first, you can feed it to me. Does he think it's made of potato? <laughs> ah, great. Okay, talk about the newspaper. Inspector, have you read this paper? Yeah, two unwelcome blasts back to back. This one at the exhibition and the Reaper getting attacked. I know, terrible news to wake up to, wasn't it? I tried to pretend I had read it and turned over for another 40 winks. Thanks to that, I was laid up and got a roast him from the super. Some mornings are like that, aren't they? Unfortunately. What about the crossbow? Can you tell us something? As a detective, what do you make of this? Personally speaking, 9 times out of 10 I find clues turn out to be red herrings. So there's every chance that's to uh, totally irrelevant. That's actually a fairly persuasive argument. What about this? Okay, we can just skip that. That means it doesn't have it doesn't bear any meaning. Nothing here either. We haven't. We have no new conversation. Okay. Okay. So. Where do we go next then? We still have some time left. We can go somewhere maybe. But I actually have no clue what we are supposed to, to do, to be honest. Maybe at the prosecutor's office? We can't. Converse, but we can talk to them. Um, Lord von Ziegs. 
I think he's ignoring you, Runo. The prosecution and defense should avoid speaking outside of the courtroom as a rule. So if anyone is being rude here, it's most certainly the man in black that's standing before us. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for setting the record straight. Hey, did you see that? He spoke to me, Runo. So, Lord Von Zeeks, have you managed to visit the Great Exhibition yet? He's definitely... He's definitely ignoring you. Right. No niceties either, then. I guess we can't talk... Oh, the apprentice is gone. Okay. So, let's move. I really don't have a clue where we're supposed to go, to be honest. Okay, Mr. Hairbrain is gone too. What about the Lord Chief Justice's office? No one here either, huh? If we go to the consultancy, we can present stuff to her, which is really nice. Have we done this? Yeah, we have done this already. I just remembered, sorry guys, but we can skip, fortunately. We already have uh, shown her the Great Exhibition newspaper too. Let's show her the crossbow. Iris, have a look at this. That's not right. I thought you were supposed to say objection or the like when you present evidence. No, no, that's only in court. That's not fair. If you won't say it, then I won't look. Hmm. Objection. Yay, that was great. Right, next. All right, I get the message. Someone's not in the mood for looking at things. <laughs> cool. All right, what about the cloth, though? Do you have something to say about this iris? No, you don't. Okay, so we can so uh, skip across that. You won't even have to say about something about this, right? Objection. Okay. All right, so that means that we don't have anything here to do. So let's just go to Sean's suite then. Hmm. Is Mr. Sean's here? No, he's not. But since we're here, we can have a look at the... Okay, we already did that. So we must go to the exhibition grounds, right? There must be something we haven't found at the exhibition grounds. Alright, so let's do that again. Hmm. We have shown her everything. We have talked to Gina about everything. Have I overlooked something? That's really strange. Can't really think of anything that I overlooked, actually. Okay, so we can look at this. That's where the cur curve ended up. That's where the curve ended up after his instant kinesis, or whatever they call it. Dead, of course. And yet they're calling the experiment a success? What's the wooden scaffold there for? The coppers, our lads, set that up after the incident happened. To get the body down, I think. Don't know, really. Didn't you help you to erect the scaffold then? No, look at that. Duty is more, more, more my thing. One around the exhibition and keeping a lookout for fun stuff. Mike Gregson doesn't hear you saying that or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible though, isn't it? I mean... Could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? That was actually the last thing that we were supposed to do. Runo, Runo, listen! What? What is it? I've been thinking. Hurley might know something, might he? About what? About Mr. Reaper! About what happened to Lord Von Zeeks, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Sholmes at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Here, yeah, this is what you need! What's this? Some kind of entrance ticket? Madame Tuspels. <laughs> okay. Madame Tuspels. Is this supposed to mean something to me? 
You don't know it? It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could go now if you like. No, no, we don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes! How is it that you know where he is? And he told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Runa. Madame Tuspelts? I don't see how it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them. So, now we know where to go. A new location has been added. It's Madame Tuspelts, which is some kind of a caricature of Madame Tussauds, I guess? Well, we're gonna move there, guys. But, 22nd October, Madame Tuspelt's Museum of Waxworks. But I'm really sorry, you can't even see the scenery because everything's black. I'm really sorry for that, but we are reaching the half hour mark already. And, you know, this is going to take some time. I really messed up this episode, but I'm really sorry that uh, things went the way they, uh, they went. But you'll have to bear with me, I'm really sorry. This is a, it's a blind let's play and sometimes the game doesn't make sense. And even if you are used to do things the way you you do, you still don't get it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't I don't want to I don't want to bore you. So, if you want to know what Madame Tuspel's Museum of Waxworks is, you'll have to tune in next time for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. See you then.